I swear every single time I sit down to film this video, it feels like I just sat down last month to film this video. Hi Bookish Besties, my name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you are already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today it is time to do my August book of the month predictions. <music> Now, before I get into the meat of the video, you will notice that I'm filming in a slightly different angle and position than I typically do. I'm playing around with it, but I don't know actually how it's going to look or anything like that. But I've always wanted to film directly in front of my bookshelves, but just for some reason, like with the lighting and stuff, it has never worked out. So we're going to see. I'm going to film the next couple of videos in this location, but if it doesn't end up working out and I switch back, that's why. Also in full transparency, I have a very big feeling that my camera battery is going to die at some point during filming this video. I tried to put in my replacement battery, but apparently it it has not been charging this entire time. So this battery is at less than halfway, which in theory should be enough to get me through this video. However, it likes to die with still about 10% of battery remaining. So we're gonna see. I really need to go ahead and get this video filmed so that it can go up on time. If you are not familiar, this is a video each month where I come on and try to predict what book of the month is going to feature as part of their monthly curated selections or as their add-on selections. And I'm actually going to be changing up the way that I format these videos going forward. In the past, I broke everything up into five distinct genres categories, which I'm still going to do. But instead of limiting myself to five for each category, I'm going to limit myself to 20 predictions overall. And then I'm going to allow myself to put however many in each category as I choose, because I've noticed that each month, typically there are some categories that are a lot heavier than others, where I would like to do more predictions for those categories. And then some categories might only have one and it's kind of wasted on them. You know what I mean? So going forward, we're going to do 20 predictions overall for the month, and they're still going to be divided into those categories. They're just not going to be limited to five five in each category, if that makes sense. So as per usual, we are going to start with the mystery thriller horror genre category. And this is actually fairly light this month. It's not necessarily because there weren't any good thrillers coming out in the month of August, but I just really didn't feel strongly about them being contenders for book of the month. So I actually only have three that I want to talk with you about today. The first is a book called House of Bone and Pain by Gabino Iglesias. His prior book, The Devil Takes You Home, was featured on book of the month, which makes me think that this book is definitely a strong contender for this category. It says, for childhood friends, Gabe, Xavier, Tavo, Paul, and Bimbo, death has always been close. Hurricanes, car accidents, gang violence, suicide, we are surrounded by ghosts, was Gabe's grandmother's refrain. But this time is different. Bimbo's mom has been shot dead. We are going to kill the guys who killed her, Bimbo swears. And they all agree. Feral with grief, Bimbo has become unrecognizable, taking no prisoners in his search for names. Soon they learn Maria was gunned down by guys working for the drunk kingpin of Puerto Rico. No one has ever gone up against him and survived. As the boys strategize, a storm gathers far from the coast. Hurricanes are known to carry evil spirits in their currents and bring them ashore. Spirits which impose their own order. Blurring the boundaries between myth, mysticism, and the grim realities of our world, House of Bone and Rain is a harrowing coming-of-age story, a doomed tale of devotion, the afterlife of violence, and what rolls in on the tide. All right, so that definitely sounds very harrowing. I'm getting a lot of S.A. Cosby vibes from this author and his works. That's one of the reasons why I originally selected The Devil Takes You Home in one of the Book of the Month selections that I made in the past, but for some reason I just could not get into it. But I'm really liking the gritty raw vibes of this one. So I could be convinced to give Gabino Iglesias another shot if he is featured on Book of the Month for sure. My next prediction for this category is a book called Then Things Went Dark by Bia Fitzgerald. Now Bia Fitzgerald is not a debut author and she's never to my knowledge been featured on Book of the Month before. But the reason why I selected this particular book as a prediction was because it incorporates a lot of things that Book of the Month really seems to enjoy featuring in their thrillers. So it says six people land on a desert island ready to make their reality show debut. Okay so right there we have a desert island and we have a reality show. This is very reminiscent of One Perfect Couple by Ruth Ware. The contestants are suitably glamorous and dramatic and also hungry to prove themselves. The stakes are high and with millions of viewers watching, losing is not an option. But three weeks and 18 episodes later, five of the six contestants sit in a Portuguese police station, none of them winners. 12 million people were watching when Reese Sutton died on camera and someone must pay for the crime. The best friend, the rival, the girlfriend, the lover, and the sworn enemy are left standing and of course, no one is talking. But how do you keep secrets when the world has been watching, especially when just a day before his murder, Reese was the most hated man on television. So like I said, there are a lot of things incorporated in this story that are very common in a lot of the thrillers that Book of the Month featured. Definitely the reality show aspects. They featured several books with reality show aspects. And as I've mentioned multiple times, they love their thrillers that are set in tropical locations, desert islands, etc. I feel like every single month so far, we've had at least one book with a similar type of setting. We've had One Perfect Couple. We've had The Resort. We've had Bad Tourists. We've had definitely a lot of books set in similar locations. So just the 
the premise of this alone makes me think that this is a strong contender. And the last one for this category is actually a queer horror novel. It is called Sacrificial Animals by Kaylee Peterson. It says, the last thing Nick Morrow expected to receive was an invitation from his father to return home. When he left rural Nebraska behind, he believed he was leaving everything there, including his abusive father, Carlisle, and the farm that loomed so large in memory forever. But neither Nick nor his brother Joshua, disowned for marrying Amelia, a woman of Asian descent, can ignore such summons from their father, who hopes for a deathbed reconciliation. Predictably, Joshua and Carlisle quickly warm to each other while Nick and Amelia are left to their own devices. Nick puts the time to good use and his flirtation with Amelia quickly blooms into romance. Though not long after the affair turns intimate, Nick begins to suspect that Amelia's interest in him may have sinister and possibly even ancient motivations. Punctuated by scenes from Nick's adolescent years, when memories of a queer awakening and a shadowy presence stalking the farm altered the trajectory of his life forever, Sacrificial Animals explores the violent legacy of inherited trauma and the total collapse of a family in its wake. All right, so that definitely sounds dark and sinister for sure. There are certainly going to be some complicated family dynamics here. It sounds like there could be a little bit of cheating involved. I really hope there aren't actually any sacrificial animals in here or any animal death or abuse. But just the premise of this and the fact that this is actually a debut make me think that it's going to be a very strong contender for this category for Book of the Month. Moving on into the romance category, I really only have one that I wanted to highlight and it's the newest release from Casey McQuiston called The Pairing. Casey McQuiston, of course, has been featured on Book of the Month in the past. And so I think they could potentially be featured again with The Pairing. Theo and Kit have been a lot of things, childhood best friends, crushes, in love, and now estranged exes. After a brutal breakup on the transatlantic flight to their dream European food and wine tour, they exited each other's lives once and for all. Time apart has done them good. Theo has found confidence as a hustling bartender by night and aspiring sommelier by day with a long roster of casual lovers. Kit, who never returned to America, graduated as the reigning sex god of his pastry school class and now bakes at one of the finest restaurants in Paris. All that remains is the unused voucher for the European tour that never happened. Good for 48 months after its original date and about to expire. Four years later, it seems like a great idea to finally take the trip solo, separately. It's not until they board the tour bus that they discover they both accidentally had the exact same idea. And now they're trapped with each other for three weeks of stunning views, luscious flavors, and the most romantic cities of France, Spain, and Italy. It's fine. There's nothing left between them. So much nothing that when Theo suggests a friendly wager to see who can sleep with their hot Italian tour guide first, Kit is totally game. And why stop there? Why not a full-on European hookup competition? But sometimes a taste of everything only makes you crave what you can't have. So there's definitely going to be like a second chance romance involved here. If you have enjoyed Casey McQuiston's work in the past, this is definitely one that I think you should keep your eye out for on Book of the Month in August. Moving on into the contemporary slash literary fiction category, we're going to start with Plays Well with Others by Sophie Brickman. It says, Annie Lewin is at the end of a rope. She's a mother of three young children. Her crypto VC husband is never found and the vicious competition for spots in New York City's kindergartens is heating up. A New York Times journalist turned parenting advice columnist for an internet startup. Annie can't help but judge the insanity of it all, even as she finds herself going to impossible lengths to secure the best spot for her own gifted and precocious son, Sam. As Annie comes to terms with the infinitesimal odds of success, her intensifying rivalry with hotshot divorce lawyer, Belinda Brenner, pushes her to the brink. Of course, this newly raw and unhinged version of Annie is great for the advice column. The more she spins out, the more clicks and comments she gets. But when she commits a ghastly social faux pas that goes viral, she's forced to confront a single question. Is she really any better than the cutthroat preschool parents she always judged? Okay, so we definitely are going to have some like rich people behaving badly. It sounds like definitely some mommy drama and our main character is going to have to reconcile with that. It sounds like there's also going to be like a toxic female relationship or at least competition between her and one of the other moms. If that sounds interesting to you, I definitely wanted to mention it because I do think that this has a premise and possibility to be featured on Book of the Month. I am just going to say here that this book only has 55 reviews on Goodreads and they're not good. It's got a 3.33 rating on Goodreads right now, so I don't necessarily have high confidence in the quality of this book, but I did want to go ahead and have it as a prediction. One selection that I am pretty confident in is the newest release from Abby DeRay called And So I Roar. She wrote The Girl with the Louding Voice, which was a very popular book of the month selection back when it was released. And her newest release is coming out in August. It says, when Tia accidentally overhears a whispered conversation between her mother, terminally ill and lying in a hospital bed in Port Harcourt, Nigeria, and her aunt, the repercussions will send her on a desperate quest to uncover a secret her mother has been hiding for nearly two decades. Back home in Lagos, a few days later, a Duni, a plucky 14 year old runaway is lying awake in Tia's guest room. Having escaped from her rural village in a desperate bid to seek a better future, she's finally found refuge with Tia who has helped her enroll in school. It's always been a Dooney's dream to get an education and she's bursting with excitement. Suddenly there's a horrible knocking at the front gate. It's only the beginning of a harrowing ordeal that will see Tia forced to make a terrible choice between protecting a Dooney or finally learning the truth behind the secret her mother has hidden from her. And a Dooney will learn that her louding voice as she calls it is more important than ever as she must advocate to save not only herself but all the young women of her home village. If she succeeds, she may 
transform Akati into a place where girls are allowed to claim the bright futures they deserve and shout their stories to the world. So that sounds like it's going to be a beautiful hard-hitting story. It sounds like there's going to be some secrets that are revealed that our main character is going to have to deal with. And we have a younger character here who is fighting for the education and rights of the females in her village and her area. I never read The Girl with the Louding Voice so I personally am not familiar with Abby DeRay but I just know that like I said that was a very popular story when it was released and this one just sounds beautiful and I have a lot of confidence that it will be featured on Book of the Month in August. All right next I have a book called Clickbait by Holly Baxter and the reason why I selected this was primarily because of this first line here that says with the dark comedy and sharp observations of Monica Helsey and Dolly Elderton both of whom if I remember correctly have been featured on Book of the Month in the past. So that led me to believe that this could entirely be a strong contender for this category for Book of the Month. It says the first thing they tell you when you begin your training is never to become the news. Natasha has screwed up royally. Her mistake isn't just embarrassing, it's a breach of journalistic ethics that makes headlines and costs her a plum job reporting from London. Back in New York at 35 and single, divorced from a kind man she loved, she finds herself at the bottom of the media food chain, a junior reporter at a clickbait factory rewriting sensational tabloid stories to make them just different enough to avoid lawsuits. As if her professional fall from grace weren't bad enough, she's taken the money she'd saved for a down payment for a home on a charming Brooklyn block with her husband and rashly bought a boxy apartment overlooking the gray ocean in Rockaway Beach, Queens. Though seeing friends and family only serves to remind her of what she's lost, things begin to pick up when her ex-boyfriend Zach moves back to New York and accepts her offer of a spare bedroom. The arrangement is strictly platonic for him, but Natasha can't help but wonder whether he might be the solution to all of her problems. As Natasha's obsession with Zach grows and her involvement in increasingly dystopian journalism deepens, her worlds threaten to collide in the most cataclysmic, extremely public way. So this just sounds like it's going to be very messy contemporary fiction. It sounds like our main character might definitely be a very flawed individual. It sounds like she might be making some extremely questionable choices. It also sounds like she's kind of reached the bottom of the barrel, so to speak, and she's trying to climb her way back up and everything from her career to love and so on. But it is that type of messy story that I do feel Book of the Month does like to highlight at a lot of points. And so that is why I wanted to go ahead and mention it here. Next, we have a contemporary debut called The Five Star Stranger by Kat Tang. It says, would you hire someone to be the best man at your wedding, your stand-in brother, or your husband? In an age where online ratings are all powerful, Five Star Stranger follows the adventures of a top-rated man on the Rental Stranger app, a place where users can hire a pretend fiance, a wingman, or an extra mourner for a funeral. Referred to only as Stranger, the narrator navigates New York City under the guise of characters he plays, always maintaining a professional distance from his clients. But when a nosy patron threatens to upend his long-term role as father to a young girl, Stranger begins to reckon with his attachment to his pretend daughter, her mother, and his own fraught past. Now he must confront the boundaries he has drawn and explore the legacy of abandonment that shaped his life. Five Star Stranger is a strikingly vivid novel about the commodification of relationships in a gig economy, isolation in a hyper-connected world, and the risk of asking for what we want from those who cannot give. This is the story of a man who finds out who he is by being anyone but himself. So that is actually really interesting. This reminds me a little bit of the main character's profession in Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood. She kind of did something similar where she was hired to be the date to a wedding or something like that. And it sounds like this man is now going to have to search for his own identity outside of the ones that he is playing to the world, if that makes sense. And he's going to have to get to know himself a little bit better because it also seems like he might be getting attached to this fake daughter to whom he's pretending to be a father, which sounds very complicated. Why would you hire a man to pretend to be the father of your young daughter? That just sounds like childhood trauma in the making, you know what I mean? But this was definitely a story that I found really intriguing. And like I said, Book of the Month likes to feature books that definitely tackle some harder, difficult, interesting, complicated topics. I know that they've had books in the past that feature like AI robot husbands and things like that. So I think like this type of story is definitely up their alley to be featured for sure. All right, and then the very final book that I have to feature in the contemporary slash literary fiction category is a book called The Rich People Have Gone Away by Regina Porter. It says, Brooklyn 2020, Theo Harper and his pregnant wife Darla head upstate to their summer cottage to wait out the lockdown. Not everyone in their upscale Park Slope condo building has their privilege. Not Xavier, the teenager in the Cardi B t-shirt, nor Darla's best friend Ruby and her partner Katsumi, who stayed behind to save their Michelin starred restaurant. During an upstate hike on the aptly named Devil's Path, Theo divulges a long-held secret. And when Darla disappears after the ensuing argument, he finds himself the prime suspect. As Darla and Theo's families and friends come together to search for her, with Ruby and Katsumi stepping in to broker the peace, past and present collide with startling consequences. For many brought back into the fold by Darla's disappearance, even those glimpsed fleetingly in the building lobby, it is a chance to renew connections or to review distances, what brings them together and what sets them apart. Set against the pulse of an ever-changing city, the rich people have gone away connects the lives of ordinary New Yorkers to tell a powerful story of hope, love, and inequity in our times while reminding us that no one leaves the past behind completely. So this sounds like it's going to be an incredibly character-driven narrative. It sounds like you're going to have a lot of people in one apartment building and then one of them goes 
missing and there's going to be a lot involved in there. This is classified as contemporary and fiction. It doesn't sound like there's going to be a mystery aspect to it so I don't really think that's the point of this story. I think it's all going to be about the relationships that are formed within this building and I love stories like that. I absolutely love very character driven narratives and that sounds exactly like what this is. This is one that I have certainly seen going around. It's getting a lot of buzz and that is why I wanted to feature it here for a book of the month prediction. All right so as expected the battery died on me so if you're seeing a shift in angles or anything like that that is why but hopefully the other battery had enough time to charge enough to get me through this video. This is a hot mess y'all between the lighting and the battery and the rain outside it's just a time. But anyway the battery died right as I was heading into the historical fiction predictions and we are going to start with There Are Rivers in the Sky by Alif Shafak. Alif Shafak was featured previously on Book of the Month with Island of Missing Trees so I definitely do think that is a top contender for the historical fiction category on Book of the Month. Okay so this is definitely a longer synopsis so I'm just going to read a little bit of blurbs here. It says from the Booker Prize finalist author of The Island of Missing Trees, an enchanting new tale about three characters living along two rivers, all under the shadow of one of the greatest epic poems of all time. It looks like it's set in 1840 London, 2014 Turkey, and 2018 London. So like the blurb said, three separate timelines, three separate characters. A dazzling feat of storytelling, there are rivers in the sky entwines these outsiders with a single drop of water, a drop which remanifests across the centuries. Both a source of life and harbinger of death, rivers, the Tigris and the Thames, transcend history, transcend fate. Water remembers. It is humans who forget. So again we have what's going to be a very character driven historical fiction and it sounds like all three of these characters, all three of these timelines are going to connect and intertwine in some way. I'm getting a little bit of wayward vibes by Amelia Hart here although not necessarily the magical realism aspect that was in that story but just the overall connection between three people who are living if not in very different times but in very different places. So this is certainly one that sounds very interesting to me. I would not be surprised to see it at all on Book of the Month and so I definitely wanted to feature this one here. Silvia Moreno Garcia also has a new release coming out in August. It's called The Seventh Veil of Shalom and she has definitely been featured multiple times in the past on Book of the Month and I would absolutely not be surprised to see her featured again. Although this one sounds like it's going to be set firmly in the historical fiction category and it's going to not have like those gothic horror elements that might have been typical in some of her past works. 1950s Hollywood. Every actress wants to play Salome, the star making role in a big budget movie about the legendary woman whose story has inspired artists since ancient times. So when the film's mercurial director casts Vera Larlos, an unknown Mexican ingenue, in the lead role, she quickly becomes the talk of the town. Vera also becomes an object of envy for Nancy Hartley, a bit player whose career has stalled and who will do anything to win the fame she believes she richly deserves. Two actresses both determined to make it to the top in Golden Age Hollywood, a city overflowing with gossip, scandal, and intrigue make for a sizzling combination. But this is the tale of three women, for it is also the story of the Princess Salome herself, consumed with desire for the fiery prophet who foretells the doom of her stepfather, Herod, a woman from between the decree of duty and the yearning of her heart. Before the curtain comes down, there will be tears and tragedy aplenty in the sexy technicolor saga. I have never read Sylvia Moreno Garcia. I know that a lot of her books, especially Mexican Gothic, get a lot of praise. This sounds like it's going to be set in a very atmospheric time. You have 1950s Hollywood, so there's definitely going to be a lot of the glamour, but also the corruption that goes along with it. And it sounds like there's definitely biblical references in here because you have Herod and Salome as well. Like I said, I am pretty confident that this one will be featured just because they have featured Silvia Moreno Garcia multiple times in the past. And then the very last one that I want to reference for the historical fiction category is a book called The Singer Sisters by Sarah Seltzer. It says it's 1996 and alt rocker Emma Cantor is on tour with her sights trained on a record deal. Emma's got no lack of inspiration for her confessional songs, chief among them her mother Judy, a 1960s folk legend who is bitterly disappointed by Emma's choice to skip college. Emma is baffled by Judy's coldness. Judy herself was only 18 when she ran away to New York to pursue music, ahead of forming the influential folk duo of the Singer Sisters with her sister Sylvia. But Judy has a long kept secret about why she abandoned her music career at the peak of her success, which is about to unravel. This is an epic family saga that follows mother Judy and daughter Emma as they navigate the ups and downs of music stardom, asking what women artists must sacrifice for success. So I chose this for the historical fiction category for a couple of reasons. First, you have the historical rock star element aspect that definitely has some vibes of Daisy Jones and the Six or the unraveling of Cassidy Holmes. And there are definitely other historical fictions that Book of the Month has featured that features musicians, rock stars in some way, shape or form. In this you also have complicated mother and daughter dynamics. So you have those complex family relationships that Book of the Month also likes to feature. And so I think that that makes this a prime contender for the historical fiction spot. It is actually very intriguing to me because I'm really interested to know why the mom in this story quit music, why she doesn't want her daughter to be a part of the music scene and all of the messiness that's going to go into that. So this is one that I am definitely intrigued by for sure. All right and then we are moving 
moving on into our last category, which is the fantasy sci-fi and magical realism category. We are going to start with Hera by Jennifer Saint. Jennifer Saint's prior novel Ariadne was featured on Book of the Month, which is why I believe that this one will be featured as well. This of course features Hera, who is the immortal goddess and daughter of the agent Titan Kronos, who helped her brother Zeus to overthrow their tyrannical father so that they could rule the world. But as they establish their reign on Mount Olympus, Hera suspects that Zeus might be just as ruthless and cruel as their father was, and she begins to question her role at his side. She was born to rule, but does that mean perpetuating a cycle of violence and cruelty that has existed since the dawn of time? Will assuming her power mean that Hera loses herself, or can she find a way to forge a better world? Traditionally portrayed as a jealous wife, a wicked stepmother, and a victim-blaming instrument of the patriarchy, Hera is ripe for a retelling that shows her as a powerful queen, ruthless when she needs to be, but also compassionate, strategic, and ambitious. With Hera, beloved and best-selling author Jennifer Saint delivers another epic and enthralling reimagining of a Greek heroine we only thought we knew. Okay, again, so we have another feminist retelling here that's painting Hera in a different light. I know very little about Greek mythology overall. I love a good Hades and Persephone retelling, but for the most part, Greek mythology, especially in the literary aspect, is not really my thing. I honestly had no idea that Zeus had a sister named Hera because we all know Zeus, right? We all know of his reputation and what his role in Greek mythology is, but I think Hera gets less attention and it sounds like she was not really portrayed very favorably in Greek mythology and Jennifer Saint is going to bring new life to her story. And I'm actually really, really intrigued by that. So if you were a fan of Ariadne, if you like Greek mythology, Greek retellings, this is certainly one that I would not be surprised to see on Book of the Month in August. This next prediction is a book called The Volcano Daughters by Gina Maria Balibera. It says a saucy, searingly original debut about two sisters raised in the shadow of El Salvador's brutal director El Gran Pendejo and their flight from genocide, which takes them from Hollywood to Paris to Cannery Row, each followed by a chorus of furies, the ghosts of their murdered friends who aren't yet done telling their stories. Endlessly surprising, vividly imaginative, bursting with lush life, The Volcano Daughters charts through the stories of these sisters and the ghosts they carry with them. A new history and mythology of El Salvador fiercely bringing forth voices that have been calling out for generations. Oh, okay, interesting. They're going from El Salvador to Hollywood to Paris to Cannery Row, which is interesting. So they're going to be all over the world and it follows these sisters, their relationship, and apparently the ghosts that haunt them. I'm curious to see how those ghosts are going to be incorporated into the story. This would be a debut author for Book of the Month. We all know that they love to feature and focus upon debut authors and put them in the spotlight. I found the premise of this to be very, very intriguing, which is why I wanted to go ahead and spotlight it here as a potential curated selection or or add-on selection. All right, y'all, we have made it to the very final prediction for this video. It is a book called Hum by Helen Phillips, and it is actually a science fiction dystopian that only recently came on my radar. It says, in a city addled by climate change and populated by intelligent robots called Hum, May loses her job to artificial intelligence. In a desperate bid to resolve her family's debt and secure their future for another few months, she becomes a guinea pig in an experiment that alters her face so it cannot be recognized by surveillance. Seeking some reprieve from her recent hardships and from her family's addiction to their devices, she splurges on passes that allow them three nights respite inside the botanical garden, a rare green refuge where forests, streams, and animals flourish. But her insistence that her son, daughter, and husband leave their devices at home proves far more fraught than she anticipated, and the lush beauty of the botanical garden is not the balm she hoped it would be. When her children come under threat, May is forced to put her trust in a hum of uncertain motives as she works to restore the life of her family. Written in taut, urgent prose, Hum is a work of speculative fiction that unflinchingly explores marriage, motherhood, and selfhood in a world compromised by global warming and dizzying technological advancement, a world of both dystopian and utopian possibilities. As New York Times bestselling author Jeff Vandermeer says, Helen Phillips in typical bravura fashion has found a way to make visible uncomfortable truths about our present by interrogating the near future. So that actually sounds really thought provoking and really intriguing overall. And I would be very interested to see it featured on Book of the Month. All right, y'all, that is it. We finally made it. Those are my Book of the Month predictions for the month of August. As per usual, if you think that there are books that I didn't mention here that could be featured on Book of the Month, either as a curated selection or add-on selection, please leave that information down below. Or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, but you wanna let me know that you were here, go ahead and leave me some kind of technical emoji, maybe like a cell phone, a computer, things like that in honor of hum, which is very intriguing to me. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week, one on Wednesdays, one on Sundays, and I would love to see you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which you can always find linked down below along with any of the books I featured in the video. And until next time, y'all, Bye.